Help! Let me out! <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, Wonder has it here, hanging out in the Mono County Jail. <laughs> That's right. This is an old historic jailhouse uh, that was built in the mining days. Uh, I think the sign out front said, well, let's go read the sign out front. Hold on, before I tell you any wrong information, let's go look at the sign. It says Mono County Jail, built of natural stone, mined locally, total cost of 57.50 US gold coin, operated from 1883 to 1964. Okay, wow, 1964, that's not really that long ago. Can you imagine ending up in that old jail? I mean, talk about like a scene from Easy Rider, if you ever saw Easy Rider. You know what I mean? Like, this is a rough old jail. Uh, I'm assuming that stove wasn't there back then, but who knows, it might have been. But yeah, look at this. It's really interesting. It's all just wide open. <laughs> you can walk right into the cells, see the crusty old bunk beds and old mattresses that the prisoners had to sleep on, <laughs> the gross old toilets and sinks they had to wash and poo, the shower. Oh my goodness. It's another cell. It's a pretty big jail. I mean, there's room for one, two, three, four. And then I think there's more cells over here. Five, six. Seven. Ooh, this guy has to be alone. That's, this cell must be for the really bad hombres. <laughs> Eight and nine prisoners. But I mean, imagine being in this friggin' old, tiny jail in 1964. Like, the Beatles were already a thing, Elvis was a thing, and people were being incarcerated in this old jail. I think that's pretty crazy. There's one other sign out here. Let's see what this says. Okay, you can pause it and read the whole thing, but basically it just talks about how it was built with super thick walls to be escape-proof. Uh, it didn't say if anybody actually ever did escape from it, but I wouldn't be surprised if they did. Anyway, uh, that's the Mono County Jail. Uh, one of the many highlights of the charming little town of Bridgeport, California, which is where I am right now, kind of, well, hanging around, taking advantage of the cell signal and Wi-Fi because I'm camped up in the hills outside town. I've been camped out at a hot spring for several days with some friends and my sister. And we had a great time, but my sister just had to leave and I'm getting ready to leave myself. And well, I thought I'd stop off here in town and take advantage of the cell signal because there was no signal up at our campsite and I'm way behind on my email. So I just kind of parked over here by the courthouse. There's kind of a really cool little courthouse park here. An old cannon on display right next to Ken's Sporting Goods. This is one of those really cute little Eastern Sierra mountain towns that caters to hunters and fishermen and all kinds of outdoors people. I'll show you, I'll give you a little glimpse of the main street. If you've ever been to Bridgeport before, well, you'll remember how quaint and cute it is. The only downside today is, well, you can see that way and that's the way we were camped up in the mountains. It's really hazy. That's right, there's uh, forest fires burning all over the west, as usual, every summer. And I think this smoke is actually blowing in from the one up, all the way up in Oregon. Uh, just the wind patterns blew it down here. But that being said, there's also a couple forest fires burning in this area too. So you know what that means. <laughs> Time to get the heck out of here. It's a pretty cool old courthouse, huh? Anyway, uh, well, I don't really have too much to report on. I've just been kind of camping and relaxing the last few days with my sis. Uh, it was a kind of a cool thing for my sister because, well, she, she's been working as a nanny, right? And her nanny gig officially ended a couple months ago, but, well, then it got kind of unofficially extended and she ended up doing some other stuff. And now she is 100% finally free for realsies. And that's why she just left because she wants to get on back down to Death Valley and start working on our compound. You know, as hot as it is down there, uh, she wants to go down there and get started at least cleaning out the inside of the house and stuff like that. So I'm actually going to meet her down there in a day or two myself. But i got to shoot a few more videos first. But anyway, we had a nice time camping up there because it was like her little vacation before she settles down into Death Valley compound mode. Uh, well, I'm still on my summer rumspringa, having my adventures until 
I have to go back, have to go back, get to go back and start helping her. So I still have, today's August 8th, so I still have 22 days, 23 days, three weeks to go adventuring around, see what I can see, do what I can do. Uh, but this was kind of like our little, our last little vacation fling together. So we spent a few days up at the hot spring, relaxing, soaking, went for a couple hikes, explored a, an old gold mine. We went to this really cool old gold mine way up in the mountains by Yosemite that was amazing. Video coming soon. Stay tuned. But yeah, she had to go on home today and well, I'm following shortly behind her. But while I'm here in an area with cell range and Wi-Fi, I thought I might as well take advantage of that to Oh, just make a quick little vlog uh, with a few little updates about things that have been going on in my life lately. Um, like, first of all, my bumper. <laughs> okay, remember how my, I was having uh, issues with my bumper? First of all, I bonked into a tree with this side the first week I had the car. So the bumper's been kind of jacked ever since the first week I've had the car. But then I went and ran into a rock about a couple months ago. And, well, it came off so much that I had to stick it on with duct tape which looks pretty trashy but works anyway long story short i ordered a new bumper on ebay the guy shipped it to me using greyhound cargo greyhound cargo i guess lost the bumper because he shipped it from houston and it's still showing up as in dallas on the greyhound website and it's almost what that was june 12th and it's almost it's almost been two months so i think greyhound lost the bumper so i talked about this in one of my last vlogs and everybody said get your money back get your money back well, I felt bad because it wasn't his fault. Like, he shipped using Greyhound. Greyhound lost it. I'm assuming he filed a claim with Greyhound and got his money back. I don't know. Uh, I tried contacting him. He wouldn't answer me, the seller. So I had to go through eBay uh, and escalate it. And so I did get a refund. I got all my money back. But because I'm a nice person, I went ahead and emailed the seller. Like, hey, man, I know it wasn't your fault. Sorry about that. I have a feeling I might still get the bumper in, like, October. It might finally arrive. <laughs> And if it does, I told him I would pay him for it then. But I think because of all the hassle and the how many times I've had to call Greyhound and sit on hold, I'll just give him half the money back because I feel like that seems fair. So that's what happened regarding my bumper. Now, another thing I was talking about in my last vlog was the fact that I was trying to cut out caffeine and quit drinking coffee because uh, I had uh, a breast ultrasound and I have cysts in my breast and caffeine can make your breasts more cystic. So I just thought, well, it might be advisable to cut out coffee altogether. And, you know, I had cut back on caffeine pretty drastically a couple few years ago when I had to have another breast thing done. Uh, but ever since then, I kind of backslid. And, you know, I started out just drinking one cup of coffee a day. And, well, before you know it, it was like two cups. And then sometimes I'd have a third cup in the afternoon. And then I would sometimes drink a Coke or eat chocolate or drink hot chocolate, stuff that has caffeine in it. You don't realize how many things have caffeine in them. Well, this time I cut out caffeine almost altogether. I quit drinking coffee. Uh, I still had some decaf left, so I finished that off, which decaf coffee has about five milligrams of caffeine per cup. Regular coffee has 130 milligrams per cup, so barely any. And then when I finished my decaf, well, golly, I would just get so tired and groggy about 10, 11 o'clock in the morning because I don't eat until 1 p.m. I do intermittent fasting, you know, I'm trying to watch my figure. So I try to eat all my food between 1 p.m. and 9 p.m. So that means when I get up in the morning at seven, I gotta go about my business, do all my stuff with no coffee and no food, nothing to give me any kind of energy. So I was finding that around 10, 11 in the morning, I was, oh, I get so sleepy and groggy. I just wanna go back to bed. So, well, I started drinking kombucha if you know what that is, it's kind of like a fermented hippie beverage. It's essentially fermented tea and sugar. But this, the, the bacteria that does the fermentation basically eats all the sugar and most of the caffeine in the tea. So you're left with a relatively healthy drink that only has like, well, the brand that I've been drinking has less than 10 milligrams of caffeine. So all of that was just to say, basically, I've been drinking hardly any caffeine for the last over a month now. It's been over a month. <sighs> I haven't noticed any benefits at all. I mean, I never got any headaches or withdrawal symptoms, uh, but I'm just out of it and groggy and oh, I just miss coffee so much. You know, I went and bought some coffee substitutes. Like I got dandelion coffee and then I got a fake coffee that's made out of uh, chaga mushrooms and ashwagandha. And they kind of look like coffee, 
and they even kind of taste like coffee, but they don't give you the same kick as coffee, unfortunately. So I don't know how long I'm gonna keep up with this zero caffeine thing. I mean, I'm gonna give it at least another month and see what happens. Uh, Cause I'm kind of curious to find out, like I was watching a YouTube video, an interview with this guy, Michael Pollan. He's like a food writer who just recently wrote a book about going off caffeine. And I was watching this interview with him and Joe Rogan where he said, after being off caffeine for two months, he had a cup of coffee and it was like a psychedelic drug experience. So I'm curious to see if that's true. So at the end of two months, I'll probably at least have one cup just to see how it is. And then I might go back to having just one very strict one cup of coffee a day. But who knows, in a month from now, I might actually find that I'm used to not having any caffeine and I might stay off it altogether. But I certainly haven't noticed any benefits. Like people talk about, oh, I quit caffeine. It's the best thing I ever did. I feel so much more, you know, I have so much more mental clarity or I sleep better. I haven't found any of that to be the case. I've had a really hard time sleeping uh, for 10 years now. I experienced an, a sudden onset of insomnia about 10 years ago. And I actually plan to make a video about that because, well, if you have problems sleeping, you know how troublesome it is. Anyway, I've had insomnia for 10 years. I figure, oh, okay, well, if I quit drinking caffeine, that ought to help my sleep. Well, no, that hasn't been the case. The church bells, ha, ah, so cool, small town life. Anyway, uh, I haven't noticed any benefits. Uh, I don't sleep any better. In fact, I was sleeping worse for a while. My teeth aren't any cleaner either. And that's actually another thing I want to talk about. You know, like I'm a very vain person. Uh, I worked as a model for a long time. So, you know, of course I tried to take good care of myself. Once I retired from modeling, you know, I'm trying to not be so vain anymore. So I shoot almost all my videos with no makeup. I quit shaving, like everything. You know, I'm just, I'm trying not to be so vain. But that being said, I still like to take good care of my teeth. And I do, I religiously brush twice a day. I floss, I take, you know, I have really nice gums, really white teeth, but, Ever since uh, I had a tooth extracted back in April, I've noticed a change. Well, you might not remember, but back in the beginning of April, I had to have one of my molars extracted because even though I take really good care of my teeth, well, apparently I grind my teeth when I sleep. Uh, and so one of my molars had cracked and the root was uh, cracked and infected. So Dennis pulled it out and they screwed in a, uh, oh wait, this side, <laughs> metal implant. <laughs> And then eventually they're gonna screw a fake tooth into it, but uh, they, I have to wait till the, my jawbone heals altogether. And well, I go in once a month for x-rays and apparently the jaw still hasn't healed enough for her to put the fake tooth on. So I still have that metal thing in my mouth. Anyway, ever since that extraction, uh, that's kind of when this, the trouble started with my teeth. I mean, this is gross and forgive me, but I don't know, you can see in a lot of my videos, like my teeth look gross and grungy and it looks like there's like food and tartar up along the gum line. Well, that's not tartar, I assure you. I'm very meticulous about brushing and flossing. I, I clean my teeth very thoroughly every morning and every night before I go to bed, no matter if I'm camping, no matter what. It's just some kind of weird staining. And I can't figure out why my teeth are all of a sudden stained now when I never had that issue before in my whole life until this extraction. I mean, I had the tooth extracted April 1st and I started noticing the discoloration uh, around the beginning of June. So a couple months after the extraction is when I started noticing it. And trust me, I noticed because, you know, I shoot all my YouTube videos. I'm ho you can't see, but I'm holding my, my cell phone and my selfie rig. And I always hold it with my left hand, shooting the left side of my face. It's my good side. For some reason, I don't like to shoot myself from this side. I feel like I look weird from this side. I don't know. You tell me. Do I look weird? <laughs> but anyway, this is the side I always shoot and the side that I always see. And so, I mean, in years and years of videos, I've been making videos since late 2016, my teeth were always white and nice until about June of this year, I noticed in uh, one of my vlogs, ah, do I have like seeds stuck in my teeth? No, it's just like some kind of weird staining and discoloration. So then I thought, well, what could be causing this discoloration? What am I doing differently? I mean, I cut back on coffee. I also incidentally cut back on alcohol because that's not good for you either. So I'm limiting myself to one small glass of red wine a night. So I don't think it's coffee and wine that are staining my teeth because I drank way more of that before I noticed this problem. The only thing I could think of that's different since I got that extraction is the dentist told me to start swishing with peroxide 
uh, I think she told me to do it three times a day at first when I still had the, you know, when they first pulled the tooth out and it was still, it hadn't healed, you know, to keep it clean. I had to swish with peroxide three times a day. And now I was doing it twice a day. And she told me to use straight up 3% peroxide. Don't dilute it with water. Just swig some, swish it for a minute and then spit it out. And supposedly that's going to make your gums healthier and even kind of keep your teeth whiter. But I don't know. Uh, I have a feeling this staining might be linked to the peroxide, which I know it sounds weird, but I'm just, I'm telling you all this because I feel like somebody watching this might have some insight into this. If there's any dental hygienists or dentists watching or anyone else has had this problem, please let me know because it's really driving me nuts. Like I've tried everything. I even got like those crest white strips to bleach my teeth, but those are also made with peroxide. And my teeth have gotten so sensitive to peroxide that it hurt, like even swishing morning and night hurt so bad that I, I cut back to once a day and I tried putting the bleaching strip on and it hurt so bad I had to pull it off after like 10 minutes. I feel like I did, I, I did some Googling and it was inconclusive. Like most websites said, yeah, it's good to gargle with peroxide or swish with peroxide. But I did find a couple places where they said, I think peroxide can damage the enamel maybe on your teeth. And I feel like maybe that's what's happening because the staining is all like down by the gum line. I don't know what's going on. It's freaking me out. It's very disheartening. Like I said, I'm vain. I don't want brown teeth. So if anybody watching has any insight into that, please let me know. God, everybody in this town probably thinks I'm a freak because I'm standing here, sitting here in the courthouse parking lot talking to myself. But I don't know. It's a hot day. I just wanted to find some shade and some cell signal and, well, talk to my friends about my problems. What's wrong with that? But those are really my only problems. My tooth, my bumper, not even really a problem. Uh, everything's pretty good. I'm looking forward to, I'm going to, after this, I'm going to go home, uh, get some more stuff, go back out to the Death Valley compound, stay there for a couple days. And I'll probably make a video about that. And then I'm going to go on one last expedition on my summer rumspringa before I, well, before I settle down in Death Valley and really start cleaning out this compound and moving all my stuff from Vegas to Death Valley. And it's going to take well, I kind of set aside the whole month of September to do that. And it might actually take the whole month of August too, because well, not only do I have to clean out the new place, but then I got to box up and move all my stuff, which you've seen how much stuff I have in my house. But then I also have to clean out uh, my house back in Vegas so that I can uh, figure out what to do with that. So I'm looking at a lot of work come September. So I'm trying to make the most of these last three weeks of precious freedom. And well, yes, it would be very tempting to just stay out past September 1st. But <laughs> I went ahead and booked a dentist appointment to get my teeth cleaned. Maybe it'll help with this brown problem on September 1st. So this way, I have no choice. I have to go back to Vegas by September 1st to get my teeth cleaned. And well, then I'll have no choice but to start working on the Death Valley move. But I, I'm actually excited about it. It's going to be fun. But that being said, I'm also not quite ready to stop adventuring quite yet. So I'll be out for three more weeks. Watch out because there'll be many more videos to come and hopefully many more fantastic adventures to share with everyone.